Humble gamers, I come to you with wonderful news. We're not going to mince any words on this one or pepper you with any vague hooks. What we have for you today is nothing short of an amazing game. Something that nobody thought would be as incredible as it actually is. So listen and listen hard because this deserves your full attention. Here's our review of Far Cry 3. Ubisoft isn't just trying to throw down a great sandbox game, more like one of the most fluid stealth shooter experiences of all time. Nearly every poorly received aspect of nearly every other shooter game has been corrected, sidestepped, or improved, up to and including the removal of lengthy doing stuff animations like opening doors or turning valves. This includes assassination kills, which can be chained together to take out four or five enemies in about a half second. The guns can be swapped out on the fly and feel good to shoot, with a wide variety in both small and military-grade armaments that range from standard shooty pistols to a semi-automatic grenade launcher. Enemies are smart, use cover effectively, and coordinate ambushes to catch you off guard, which can turn an otherwise normal base wipe into a frantic gun battle in the middle of a burning jungle. Any situation can be approached with the delicate precision of a silent killer or the run-and-gun swear shooting of a 12-year-old on his Call of Duty break, with no penalties for breaking character and switching up your tactics. The story is incredible. Yeah, okay, there's a little bit of rocket power island magic flying around, but it's never used in such a way that it becomes an overwhelming story component. For the most part, you're just a party-hard college grad with bad hair that ends up in the nightmare hostage scenario from every thriller movie in the mid-2000s. And it gets worse from there. Between the brutality of your captors and the slow transformation from cargo shorts wearing D-bag to vicious killer, you'll collaborate with characters who are broken and crazy in nearly every way imaginable, with a powerfully written script that mostly succeeds in playing down your shifting psychological profile as events spiral out of control. It sets a very dark tone early and keeps it there, tempering every high with a wicked low, while never letting the action elements flare out. This is an enormous game, featuring one of the most stunning sandboxes any of us have ever seen. Foliage is lush and plentiful, the vistas are gorgeous, and you get eaten by tigers more than you might expect. Every nook and cranny is filled with a side quest or hidden collectible, with a huge emphasis on exploration. That's the best part. Like Skyrim or Fallout, exploration is rewarded with both hard loot and the coveted I saw that and it was awesome moments. And while yes, you're going to be crouching through a lot of small caves, the majority of your time will be spent checking out unique lands marks just because they're there. And on top of that, you can upgrade and unlock a ton of weapons, lock down areas for the natives, hunt a couple dozen types of animal, upgrade your equipment with their stinky pelts, or have trippy hallucinatory drug experiences, all tied together by a fantastic fast travel system. Okay, okay, enough gushing. Here's the bad. Driving any vehicle is rough in Far Cry due to the angle of your first-person view and the lack of any real spatial awareness, which leads to a lot of cars being driven into a lot of rocks and trees. Hang gliders and boats are a little better, but they still take a lot of getting used to, which is fine, really, because between the fast travel checkpoints and your standard run speed, you probably won't need any of them outside story missions or relic hunting. Unless you're into the supply drop quests, of course, which throw you behind the wheel of an armory car or bike as you hit difficult-to-navigate checkpoints in the dense foliage. In that case, enjoy your restarts. The stealth takedown mechanic offers a lot of grisly, quick and dirty options for eliminating enemies, but it has a major failing in not being able to move bodies once they fall down. It's not a huge issue since you can just shoot your way out of a firefight, but if you're trying to be stealthy, a misplaced pirate can ruin your run. To make things worse, the stab and drag mechanic, which is the only way to move dead enemies, is a fickle bitch to control properly and often drops them in awkward ways. It's a very minor but aggravating complaint, considering I never had this problem when I had bodies in real life. Money is a very strange commodity in the world of Far Cry. On one hand, guns and maps are pretty expensive, but on the other, you can get all the guns for free, and exploring for even an hour or two will net you enough money to buy anything you want. This makes the store system somewhat silly. Likewise, experience is plentiful if you pick up the exceptionally cheap collectible maps, which will allow completionists to net thousands of experience points above their level cap before even a single mission is complete. If you're dedicated to the hunt on even a casual basis, you'll rocket past the intended level gap at a stupid speed, rendering some of the mid and late game challenges fairly unchallenging for, ahem, game sharks. Sure, lots of games try, but there's only one that allows you to jump off an embankment onto a dude, stab him in the head with a hunting knife as you simultaneously steal his meth pipe, then sell the meth pipe and use the money to buy a grenade. That game is Far Cry 3. Between the dark, violent story, the epic visuals, and the go big or go home stealthy gunplay, what we're looking at is easily one of the best games of this console generation. Trust us, you're going to love this game. Our verdict? A 9 out of 10.